hearing is being conducted in consideration of the pro application for Hunter Bowman, a May number 443-543. He is serving a sentence of 15 years jail, two and a half years to serve, followed by 13 years of probation for possession of child pornography second. As of today, records reflect the parole eligibility date of May 2nd, 2024. There was no in victim input in this case. There is an offender accountability plan for the offender. It has been reviewed and shows the offender has completed the following programs. The short track sex offender program and voices. Utilizing the statewide collaborative offender risk evaluation system, this offender's overall score falls within the moderate range of risk for recidivism. If a sex, if a sex offender Utilizing the static 99R, the offender's overall score for sexual offense recidivism falls within the low moderate range. Mr. Bowman, this is your opportunity to express to the board why you should be granted parole. You may begin. I would like to um, be given the chance to get out and begin um, furthering my, my treatment. I have experienced um, success with the DOC mandated programs that they've had me do here, and I would I would like to get out and be able to continue on that success and do everything possible to um, get back to life to get back to being a productive member of society get back to the family and get their support on top of all the others all right well thank you mr bowman for that opening statement um uh, many of what much of what you mentioned in your opening statement is our desires for you you know we want to keep the people that we consider bad people inside the prison um and uh but those who can actually learn from their mistakes and avoid these behaviors in the future. Yeah, we can gauge, I guess, a little about their change, their level of change, and, and hope that they, when they return, um, that they learn their lesson. And when they go back out in the community, then uh, hopefully they will not commit any more crimes. Your offense is very um, concerning to me uh, because one, the length of time that it incurred. Like the, I mean, that it occurred, not. And um, the fact that you admit that you have uh, some attraction to the things that you were viewing uh, on the internet. So you've taken a short term uh, uh, program since you've been in there. Ha were you able to identify any uh, anything that would help you avoid these behaviors? in the future um a lot of what the short course program covered was was about self-policing and not allowing uh fantasies to become realities and um you know it also covered just how much uh the, the actions I was taking were, were re-victimizing and creating new victims. Mm -hmm. Very good insight. That's good. So how do you avoid, so you avoid doing this again in the future by understanding that when you look at this or distribute this kind of thing, you are victimizing another, another person who didn't you know they can't they they can't um uh, approve or, or or consent to doing this kind of thing because they're not old enough to do that so um when you go out into the community things are going to be very very different for you you understand that um yes. and so you you know the your ability to be around children and things of that nature you know go to a park to a mall to a movie all that stuff is is really going to be different. How do you think you're going to handle that? I hope you don't say I'm just going to stay in the house. Um, I hope to handle it by by leaning on the family, by by um, looking to the family for support and 
um, you know, spending spending most of my time doing things with the family. And do you intend to work? Yes, I, I have work lined up as soon as I uh, leave. And so, what happens if you're going about your day and you come across the child? What 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 are you supposed to do? Um. Yeah, if I come across a child, I, I do absolutely nothing. Um, you know, I, well, you I can't. can't you, so if you're if you're standing, if you know that one of your conditions, because uh, you do have probation violations, since it's a long time too. One of the conditions will will be that you are to have no contact with minors. So if you're standing in the store and there's a kid in front of you, or you walk, you're on your way to work and you encounter a child then you have to have a, a plan of action. So whatever you are going to get at that store either needs to be put back, you remove yourself from that situation so that you're not violated. And then maybe once the child is gone or then you can go back in, but you, you have to think of situations just as simple as that. You know what I mean? Where you're in close proximity to children or you know what happens if someone says, oh wow, that's Mr. Bowman. Did you read about what he did on the internet? How do you handle that? The um, the idea of, of someone saying that, oh, I, I saw him on the list. Um, and everybody who, who is important to me in my life knows exactly where I am, exactly what I did to get here. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody else that decides that all I am is based off of the fact that I am on the list is, is not someone who will be important in my life. But you do realize that there are stigmas associated with people that are considered sex offenders and people will know they have every right to know that you're in their neighborhood and they may treat you some kind of way. And so you have to understand that things as you, they were normally in your life are not going to be the same when you return. So I, I just want you to be aware of that because I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to tell you that it's going to be difficult. And so it's important that you have a plan in place. Sounds like you have the support, you need to do a little more planning, you know, because different things will, will occur that, that you will find yourself like birthday parties or, any, you know, it's so many weddings, you never know things that you'll have to turn down because you don't want to be violated or you have to get permission for, you know? Um, I did see that you were looking into getting your CDL. I do know that this is your only offense. And um, I did read uh, the PSI where your sister was in support of uh, your not even spending time in prison, you know, because you guys have already suffered a tremendous loss. And I, my, I apologize, I, my condolences for your loss. Uh, and she just wants you all to be a family again, which is rare, but I'm, I'm glad to see that she's still there and supportive. Um, I also see that you didn't get receive any disciplinary infractions. You've taken the appropriate programming. And um, I also know that you have to appear on the sex offender registry for what, 10 years? I actually have not been informed of that. No one has told me I have to be on it for life. I didn't say life. No, I, I was you know saying that. Long? OK. For 10 I years, I believe it. it. Yeah, I couldn't find it either, but I know that he has to be on there. So are you OK with an officer going through your phone or you're not being authorized to be on Facebook or Instagram or or chat now or Me Too or whatever things are called? I don't, what is it, Snapchat? All that stuff, you know? Um, yes, I was on, I was on pre-trial supervision for over two years. And for the first year, I wasn't allowed any internet access whatsoever. And for the second year, I was allowed to have a cell phone, but the officer could confiscate it at any time and go through sure. it at any time. Okay. And do you have any problem with, uh, I heard you talk about continuing treatment and I'm, I'm assuming that you have your own private uh, physician in line or 
something lined up, but you'll also have to do it in the community until they feel that you've that you successfully completed the program. So you don't have any problems with that either, right? No, I, I welcome any and all treatment. Okay. All right, Ms. Palmieri. Thank you. So Mr. Bowman, uh, the chair touched on the fact that you had done, that you'll have treatment in the community and you mentioned having done some in pretrial. And I read that you found that treatment to be very helpful. What, what were some of your takeaways from that particular treatment? From the uh, the treatment the with Mr. Hobson, mm -hmm. with the Mr. Hobson, um, that that was largely to do with um, you know I, I was I was still dealing with the the older sister's death and I was I was just in a a tailspin from that and it, it um, you know that was the uh, contributing factor that pushed me so deep into the the addiction that I ended up getting caught was I was just so out of touch with reality anymore. So directly after the search warrant was uh, served and I, I started treatment with uh, uh, William Hobbs, um, it was largely about understanding why I was doing it and what who it was harming and um, it, it, it was mostly for me it was understanding why I was doing it okay okay and do you understand why you're doing it do you have a, a because I also read that uh, you were using the pornography to meet your emotional needs so I, what I'm getting to is, have you been able to develop what we would call a relapse plan, some some aspect um, of a plan so that when you find yourself, as you put it, going down a rabbit hole, that you'll be able to stop yourself, have somebody else that you'll be able to uh, reach out to as a monitor? So please. I I, I did a relapse plan with the uh, the short course program here with Melissa, and um, largely the the over overall relapse prevention portion of it is that everybody in my family knows what I'm dealing with. They'll know exactly what my conditions are. I, I can I can go to any one of them if I I feel that I'm struggling that I need help. And they'll they'll make sure I get the help. And then I also have the uh, you know I was dealing with the, the probation officer before, so I'm hopeful that whichever probation officer I end up with, I'll be able to go to them if I need help as well. Cool. Yeah. Very good. I I got the I from reading the summary from your treatment at the facility. It appears that you, although you were kind of reserved, as they said, you did gain some valuable insight into what your behaviors are that led you into viewing the pornography. Do you feel that's true? Yes. Um, you know, in, in the, the group with Melissa, um, you know that, that she was talking about a lot of the emotional reasons um, and the, the biggest emotional factor that seemed to be for me personally was um, a feeling of, of lack of control in my own life and um, okay and I'm so I would I'm going to say that you and Melissa worked on a plan for how to manage your, your emotions a little bit close, more closely in the community? Um, so I, I'd already, I hadn't done the, the treatment with Melissa, obviously, until I got here. But at, like I said, between the, between the search warrant and the sentencing, I was in the community for 
roughly three years. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd already developed an understanding of how how to prevent myself from relapsing. What what I um, what I needed to do in my life to to keep myself away from going back there. Mr. Bowman, I, I, I did read um, your pretrial about your pretrial treatment. It seems like you were very committed to that. And like I mentioned earlier, the summary from your treatment at the facility indicates that, you know, for the time that you were in, you were committed and you seem to have benefited from it. So I wish you well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Palmieri. Ms. Chance? Yeah, so Ms. Bowman. Would you say that during the three years that you were in the community prior to your incarceration, when you were meeting with Bill Hobson, that that helped you to have a better understanding when you participated in the short-term sex offender program? I think it helped my understanding of, of what we were looking for in that program and it it definitely helped me be willing to to delve into what was going on with me and rather than just being stuck at um being unwilling to admit that what i've been doing was so terrible i think she referred to it as you were in the action stage right action stage of change, um, you know, because you, you took full responsibility for the offense and you did show some remorse, right? And I know that a um, couple of the things that uh, you worked on with her, I thought she did a very good assessment of where you are today. You seem what very reluctant to share, but I believe you have acquired a very good uh, knowledge of what was going on with you and where you are today. Um, and she described it, and I'm not gonna go through it because it's like two pages, but uh, the final analysis that um, you have certainly you know, identify um, the age group that you are actually sexually attracted to. And you were able to work through that and express uh, your thoughts and feelings about that. And then you were asked to um, identify uh, a high risk situation for you when you go back in the community and it, you said that it was being able to access the internet. And so I believe you're going back home to your parents. That is the plan, yes. Yeah, and they are aware that they have to have some restriction on their access to the house internet. Yes, they, they'll they'll keep me on the street in there. If, if it comes down to it, they they won't have internet in the house if that's what they have to do. Um, so um, I just need to say, Miss Bowman, you're you're 28 years old, look a lot younger, but just from what I've read about the treatment that you've done prior to your incarceration and your 12-week short-term sex offender program, that you have done well in the program, and that you have a, a good treatment plan for when you go home to follow through with all the areas that you have identified. And you have the support of your family. Okay, so I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Ms. Chance. Um, I think that uh, Mr. Bowman is an appropriate candidate for discretionary parole. I think that he would benefit from the higher level 
of supervision prior to his starting that 10 years of probation. Hopefully that he could complete it successfully. Of course, he would have a restriction on pornography and be uh, stipulated to participate in problem sexual behavior uh, treatment in the community. And, and they would be monitoring his electronics and uh, yeah, he would not yeah. Yeah. and he would not uh, be able to have contact with minors without the full officer's permission. Um, I heard the officer say his eligibility date was May. Was it May 1st? May 2nd. May 2nd, which means his date would be today. Um, are there any objections to that or no. those conditions? No. Any additional? No. Yep, me too. With regard to Hunter Bowman, four four three five four three, I move that he be voted. Uh, I move that he be granted discretionary parole on or after today's date, June tenth, twenty twenty four, with the following conditions. In addition to the standard parole conditions, he is to have no contact with minors without the parole officer's permission. He is to be uh, his electronic devices are to be monitored, enhanced monitoring. Also, he has a restriction on pornography and he will participate in problem sexual behavior treatment in the community. Did I say everything, ladies?